I first met Jeff Garland about 20 years ago at a Hell gig. And for those of you who are not comedians and are not aware of Hell gigs, that's when you go and you play some club in some town where the people, I don't know, they just suck. But anyway, we had a lot of fun. Um, my husband was middling for Jeff and, and he was lovely. And he was even more lovely years later when at a very star-studded celebrity Christmas party, um, Jeff put all the attention on my children and spent five minutes entertaining them to the point where my daughter had tears in her eyes. That's a minch. Yeah. That's a minch. Yeah. <laughs> we all know Jeff Garland as Larry David's manager <laughs> on Curve. We all know that. And by the way, <laughs> okay, I'm throwing in my pitch. Because I was at this memorial uh, for somebody who passed away that we all love to know, uh, Ken Ober, uh, a few months ago. And it was a very sad day. And um, Larry was sitting with um, Carol Liefer, who had done Women Who Write. And I'm a merciless opportunist. And I decided that I was going to take the opportunity and approach Larry and talk to him about coming to read for us. I started to walk down the stairs as he started to walk up. And he gave me a look of death, like, if you dare fucking come over to me, I am going to rip your fucking head off. And there are not many people in this world that can scare me. He scared the shit out of me. I sat right back down and did not go over to him. But I did have this great idea. It gave me this great idea about a curve. By the way, for those of you that don't know, which I did not know, Jeff brought the idea of curve to Larry. And he only intended to direct it. And then Larry insisted that he co-star and exec produce it, which is so fucking cool. But his idea, I mean, that's just crazy. Um, and I, yeah, shit for a mom, my kids are hooked. We have like the whole box set, we let them watch it, we all scream, and, and it's something we do as a family. <laughs> um, but anyway, I had this idea that uh, for this curb where, because Susie was doing, I, I had already booked Susie, I knew she was doing it, and I didn't know if Jeff was going to do it yet, and I'd been, I'd been chasing him on Facebook for a long time. But here was Larry, and I thought, wouldn't it be great to have Larry like do this curb that, you know, I'm trying to get Larry to do, well, somebody playing me, he's trying to get Larry to do, to do Women Who Write, and he says, no, 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 and then Susie does it, and she says, oh my God, the best food I've ever had, this chicken salad, you would die for the chicken salad. <laughs> so then Jeff comes, and he does it, and he's like, oh my God, the chicken salad, you can't, but he's a vegetarian now, we have to make it something else. And so then Larry decides now because he wants to do it because he wants a chicken salad. So he comes, but the woman with the chicken salad doesn't come. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> That's my pitch. Okay. okay. He was a regular on Mad About You, another one of my absolute all-time favorite shows. Forget it, Murray? Were you Mar 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 Marvin? Marvin. Marvin. He was Marvin. Murray, yeah. Um, he directed both John Stewart and Dennis Leary's um, comedy specials. He also did his own. Um, he's been on Dr. Katz, Arrested Development, Everybody Loves Raymond, The Late Show with David Letterman, The Daily Show, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. He co-starred with Eddie Murphy in Daddy Take Care. It was so funny. He appeared in Steven Soderbergh's Full Frontal, starring Julia Roberts and David Duchovny, because even big stars have to make porn occasionally. Um, his feature film debut, I Want Somebody to Eat Cheese With, which he also wrote, premiered to favorable reviews at the 2006 Tribeca Film Festival. He has a ton of other movie credits. He's done voice work in Wally and Toy Story 3. He has become a recurring character on Wizards of Waverly Place, which would be a much more appropriate place for my kids to know you from, but nah. um, Anyway, um, yeah. Um, most recently, he appeared as Sid alongside Jennifer Aniston and Gerard Butler in the 2010 comedy action film, The Bounty Hunter. And now he's written a book, My Footprint, Carrying the Weight of the World, and has shamed me by losing weight as I have gained it. Ladies, please welcome Jeff Barber. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. I, I don't know what to say. That is unequivocally the longest intro I've ever allowed. I don't know why I even allowed it, but I felt it's her house. I feel rude if I... Well, you know, it's sort of, yeah. So, um, I, um, she mentioned that I was uh, a voice in the movie Wally. Um, I was the captain of the ship in Wally, and when I left the theater having seen it like I saw it like 10 times I loved it and um, 
and I feel so honored to have been in it. And, and I had been asked to write books before, but I didn't want to just write a book for money. Money's good, pro money, but I also <laughs> am. But a book is too hard of uh, something to do to just write it as a lark or have a ghost writer, which I had no interest in. And so when I came out of the theater uh, this last night, it was a closing night at El Capitan. You know, they do floor shows even there's only like 30 people. <laughs> so on Hollywood Boulevard, I said to my wife, I go, I have an idea for a book. I, I said, I'll be like the captain. I'll lower my footprint. I'll call it my footprint. I'll be lowering my carbon and my personal footprint the way that he had to. And she goes, oh, that's great, you know. And then I thought it would be... Well, I started to gain weight after I sold it, a as I was writing it, from the anxiety of writing a book. <laughs> I did. And then, uh, as I was reading what I was doing in terms of the self-destructive behavior, it occurred to me that I was an addict and I needed to do something about it. And then, um, Curb started production and uh, it most of the book is about on Curb Your Enthusiasm me trying to do this. Uh, so uh, I made a decision uh, that I was going to ride the bus here in Los Angeles to work. Um, yes, that was my, <laughs> that's what I thought the reaction should be. I have, an, I have a show that I'm, take, I'm off now for the summer, but I do uh, from uh, 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 the winter and the spring. Um, at the UCB Theater in Hollywood, and I have a regular audience there, and I said to them, I'm going to ride the bus, and it was really a, very nonplus by this, and I go, well, it's not, I'll ride it for a week, you know, and still not much of a reaction. <laughs> and um, I said, how many of you ride the bus? A lot of young people, you know, and I'd say maybe a quarter of the hundred and some odd people took the bus, and I said, oh, okay. I'll take it for a month. Then I got applause. <laughs> like, okay, big shot, you know. So uh, this is uh, the story of the first day that I rode the bus. Um, we are filming a scene at Larry David's house in Brentwood where Larry offers to put his cousin Andy's daughter through college. Today is the day I finally start my month long only taking the bus festival. I have to leave at 7.20 a.m. to make a 9 a.m. call time. Nonetheless, I left my house this morning so crazy excited. I don't like walking unless I have a destination, so I was happy to be bouncing to the bus. My wife was so proud of me as I walked out the door, and she also thought I was an idiot. <laughs> I think that uh, she is both proud and thinks I'm an idiot every day, but today the dichotomy was heightened. She actually offered me a ride to the bus stop, very nice of her, but I don't think she's quite getting it. As I'm walking down the hill, a steep hill, I pass a neighbor walking his dog and I say to him, I'm taking the bus today. <laughs> As if I'm an eight-year-old on his first day of school. Oh, good for you, good for you, that's great, that's great. Now it's about a mile walk from my house to the bus stop. About midway, there's a busy street with no sidewalk. So there's a level of danger which only, today only adds to the excitement. <laughs> I passed by my old house, which isn't far from where I live now. I used to live down the block from this Jewish guy who actually built his own fence. I remember being so impressed that a Jew would build a fence. <laughs> I'd see him working on it and think, what are you doing? Not only did he physically not look like the type of guy to build a fence, but he seemed so out of character. I am not Baron Von religious, but I follow the credo of Jews throughout history which is, I have an idea to build a fence. Hey, I'll pay somebody to build my fence. <laughs> but this Jew actually built his own fence. As I passed by it on my way to the bus stop, I noticed that flowers and vines have grown all over it. And it occurs to me that I have driven by that fence many times in the years since I've lived here and never once noticed the flowering vines. Just as healthy eating retrained my taste buds to appreciate a low-sodium diet, Maybe this walking business will teach me to appreciate nature without Blu-ray. <laughs>